Picture this. We have two groups of shooters fighting at two different targets. The first group can be said to be biased. They are systemically deviating, in this case to the left. The second group, on the other hand, can be said to be noisy. They are scattered randomly throughout the target. Errors can usually be summed up in one of these two ways, or a combination of them. Systemic deviation, or bias, and random scatter, or noise. Much thought has gone into bias identification and elimination. The reason for this isn't really clear, but it might be because it's easier to identify and target and bias than noise. The book Noise attempts to shed some light on the second part of errors, noise in judgments. The main thesis of the book is that noise is everywhere, and often more than we think. And like in a hospital, one of the best ways to avoid contamination is to wash your hands. You don't really know what bacteria or virus you're protecting against, but you are removing them. So in order to reduce noise, which we know exists, but we don't know what kind or how much, we must have, like a good hand hygiene, we must have a good decision hygiene. And a good decision hygiene can be given six steps to follow. The first one, replace judgments with rules or algorithms. Judgments should not be the place to express individuality if we want accuracy. Algorithms can also help, and it might be the only way to reduce noise completely. Tell that to Skynet. Second one, think statistically and take an outside view. Think of the problem as a member of a similar class of problems, and don't try to create a casual story to explain it. Structure judgments into individual tasks. It's easier to pass judgments on single variables than a large, complicated, interconnected number of variables. This has inspired diagnostic guidelines like the APGAR score for newborn children. If you don't know what the APGAR score is, it's um, a score which you apply to newborn babies based on the appearance, pulse, uh, grimace, activity and respiration. It measures how healthy newborns are. Resist premature intuitions. Try to restrict information that could be used to create an individual story. An example of this is in forensic science, where examiners should be kept unaware of other information of the suspect. Because knowing if the investigation considers the person guilty or not uh, might influence their judgment. Aggregate judgments from multiple independent judges. Averages of group of judges are much less noisy than single judges. An interesting example of this uh, in the book is an experiment carried out by uh, a cousin of Darwin called Francis Galton. Francis asked 787 villagers in 1907 at a country fair to estimate the weight of a prize ox. While none of the individual villagers guessed the actual weight of the ox, which was 1,198 pounds, the mean of their guesses was 1,200 pounds just two pounds off, which makes this crowd very intelligent and wise. Favor relative judgments and scales to absolute ones. Comparisons against each other is usually more accurate than absolute ones. For example, what is wealthy? Is a guy worth $20 million wealthy? Compare that to Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos, when it puts it into perspective. So by applying these six guidelines, or at least some of them, um, to your decisions and judgments, you should be able to wash your decision of noise and make them sparkling clean. Thank you for listening, and I hope you learned something today.